Okay, so I'm going to choose the color of uh, the windows that I draw on this box so everything will be more clear. Let's start from interpreting the bottom, the bottom part of this uh, box plot. Uh, within this area between 4 and 0, all the way here, right here 25 percent of our dat data lies in this area that's between 0 and 4 now I have dragged it to the left side so that you can see uh, the, the region more clearly so the region is from 0 to 4 now there is one more area of course that's the area between 8 and 4 slightly above 4 like that and uh, they don't they don't actually overlap it's my drawing which is not uh, pretty precise I'm sorry about that but let's not make them let's just assume that they're not overlapping okay so this is another region where the rest of the data that's 50 percent actually lies so anything that falls between this uh, within this box is 50 percent that's the main bulk of our data so 20 percent at the bottom 50% here and naturally 25% more left which is right here so I'm going to drag it to the left hand side so you will see the range of the data whereas the 50% of the data that I mentioned falls between 4 and 8 the top 25% falls between 8 and 10 uh, so the 5 to, uh, 25% is here in this region 50% uh, in the middle is here and 25% of the data at the bottom is here thus the, the word bottom 25% okay let me now clear uh, clean everything for you this way and uh, add on a few more words here that are that will be I think helpful to further interpret this data the first thing that uh, I would like to add here is uh, this uh, line right here I'm gonna draw a line over it so I will highlight it for you this this line this uh, the bottom side of the box is also referred to as the first quartile meaning that below this are 25 percent of the data and this line here that's the top side of the box is also known as the uh, third quartile of the data and uh, meaning that below this that's from here all the way down to the minimum uh, number the, the minimum uh, figure of the data uh, in between this this point and this point lies 75 percent of the data and as a result the median itself becomes the second quartile so first quartile second quartile third quartile and naturally naturally the fourth quartile so we've got fourth quartile and every quartile is one fourth or one quarter of our data that's 25 percent so 25 percent of the data is here 25 percent of the data is between 0 and 4 in other words 25 the the second 25 percent is between 4 and 6 is right here and then and that's below the median uh, the third 25 percent is here that's between 6 and 8 and the fourth or the highest 25 percent of the data is right here between 8 and 10 so that's how we interpret this box plot now in in, in this uh, representation we don't have any uh, any sort of uh, outlying data so it would be nice to take a look at a data set that has got some outlier so I'm going to introduce some outlier uh, as you s remember, uh, I'm just really going to add it to, to the data we have. As you remember, we had uh, a, a range of 0 to 10. That's the minimum of 0 and a maximum of 10 in, in section 1. That's the data I'm looking at. Now, what I would like to add here is a very uh, strange data. For example, something like uh, 21. Okay, So 21 is way above the maximum and therefore... Uh, the, it will be not clustering with the main data set so I'm gonna go back to explore uh, just to remind you what I did I moved section one let me just do it again section one on the right side on the left side 
to populate the dependent list on the right hand side. Then I clicked on statistics, I click outliers. Uh, previously we didn't have any outliers, but I assume this time around we're gonna have at least one outlier. And then I click plots, I got a histogram, or you can check it, uh, just uh, uncheck it if you like to. But I'm gonna leave it so you will see the, the shape of the uh, histogram as well. But most importantly, normally, uh, sorry, sorry, normality plots with tests. I'm gonna click uh, continue and okay. Okay, there we got it. So let's take a look at this. You see, this is the shape of the, the previous data set, the data set without the outlier that I have included in it. And that's the histogram. Now, the new one has a different mean of 6.25. Um, the median is still the same and the maximum and minimum the minimum is zero but the maximum has changed to 21 that's not surprising now as you see the histogram has completely changed because now there is a huge gap between the outlier we got here and the rest of the data the rest of the data if you just ignore this looks like normally distributed but the the presence of this little number 21 has actually skewed the data towards the right side. So our data is positively skewed. If you look at the uh, skew number, here is, you see the skew is 0 0.826. Uh, so this indicates that it is positively skewed. Uh, this is the outlier. This line on a QQ plot represents the uh, kind of assumed normal distribution and the data uh, on the sample that we are investigating are represented by these dots around it. As you see, these dots are pretty close to the normal distribution line, but that dot, which represents 21, the, the datum that I just added, uh, is very off from uh, the normal distribution. And the same here. Now, look at our new box plot. It's been squashed. It, it's uh, squashed. It's uh, quite scrunchy now. And the reason is the presence of this outlier, which is way above the main bulk of our distribution. Now, this, the fact that we have got an asterisk indicates uh, this is case 210. So I go back to uh, this site to see case 210, which, is, uh, which happens to be 21. Uh, so the reason why we have an asterisk indicates that it's an extreme outlier. Whenever we have an asterisk, well, a representation of an extreme outlier, it's important that we look into that data set or that datum very carefully to find out whether we want to leave it in the data or we, we remove it. One last thing, I think uh, instead of 21, what I would like to, to do is to add, to replace it with 15. Or just, uh, actually, I'm going to keep 21 and also include a 15 to see what happens this time around if we go for another round of analysis. I go to descriptives, uh, explore, and I, I'm going to leave everything in the same way and click OK to get the new box plot. Let me just quickly go down to box plot. You see we have got two dots here. This one is uh, obviously closer to the normality uh, line, but let's see what the box plot shows. Yes, this is exactly what I was referring to. Uh, this dot indicates an outlier and this dot this asterisk represents an extreme outlier so what we need to remedy in the first place is this extreme one what we often do in these cases and since we have already gotten an, gotten a clear idea that the data these two dots make our data extremely non-normal as you see from here and as you see from these dots because they fall away uh, uh, far away from the normal line, what we need to do is often we remove them and that's um, known as the destruction of the data that's, that is uh, making the data skew from the normal distribution. Some other people, some scholars would say, no, you, you must not destroy it, but use uh, some data analysis methods that do not assume normal distribution. But in either case, it's important to take into account that our data is, is not normally distributed. So that brings me to the end of this presentation about box plots. I hope you found them useful. Thank you.